Racing in the rain is one of the true ways to show your racing prowess as a driver. Michael Schumacher, Ayrton Senna, Max Verstappen, all fantastic greats of our sport. And it's no coincidence that they are all known as rainmeisters as well. With iRacing's latest update, we now have the best ever simulation of wet weather driving in a racing game. So if you've never learned to race in the wet, now's the time to do it. So strap in, I'll be going through my 10 things that you need to do if you wanna be a good wet weather driver. Before we get into my top 10 tips to do when racing in the rain, I do need to acknowledge I'm on the latest release version of iRacing. A few notes on the current build. At the moment, I feel like there's way too many puddles on the track. They're like everywhere. So don't drive through them at the moment. You can't avoid them, but it's there's too many. I also feel like the wet line is slightly too strong at the moment. We'll get into the wet line later. Um, but I hope to see this tweaked in the future. Also, tire temperature is really important in our current patch. So take us a couple of laps for your tires to come up to temp. And uh, a few laps, you'll see a bunch more grip than when you first started. So let's start with the 10 things that you need to do when racing in the rain. Number one is make your setup wet weather ready. So there's a few things you can do to your race setup, your car setup to make it ready for the wet weather. As you're going much slower in the wet, our lateral forces through the corner are much lower. So we want to soften the car as much as possible generally with the suspension and anti-roll bar settings from what I've found. So it's easier for the car to roll over and load up the outside tires. We'll also generally want to go with as much wing as possible if we're in an aero car. And if you're in a car with ABS and TC, crank those up a bunch to the wet weather levels. Also in real life, we generally go up in tire pressure in the wet from what I've found, but in iRacing, we run minimum tire pressure. So I don't think that changes with this patch. I probably just wouldn't touch the tire pressure. Another change that I recommend is to move your brake bias backwards. This depends on each car, but there's two reasons that we do this. One, as you're going slower in the wet, there is less and using less brake, the weight transfer and load over the front tires is much less than in the dry. So you're using them a lot less. And two, your front tires are actually kind of clearing a tiny bit of water so the rear wheels can drive through it. So the rear wheels actually have a bit more grip. For this reason, you need to put your bias backwards to use your rear tires more. Also a preference thing, but I hate my front tires locking in the wet. So I just like running the bias back anyway. The final thing you need to do and not forget is to put wet tires on. Don't, don't forget to do that. So my second tip for wet weather driving is to stay off the racing line in long corners. The racing line is slippery in the wet for two main reasons. So a lot of time we want to stay off it. The first reason is track polishing. Uh, asphalt is a bunch of, basically, I'm not an expert on the ground, but asphalt is basically a bunch of stones uh, stuck together with tiny little channels for water to fit into. And as tires, as we drive over the road, tires grind away at the top level top surface of stones uh, there's less space for water to kind of seep into so instead the water sits on top of the road and you get less grip a great example of this is the Nordschleife. life if you've driven the nords in real life cars are running on it every single day so the driving line is like completely smooth the other thing is rubber when we drive on a racetrack we lay rubber down from our tires uh, which is really grippy in the dry but in the wet it becomes very slippery these two things combined to make the racing line have much less grip than we do have offline. Generally in the dry, for example, we start by braking on the outside, then hitting the apex on the inside of the track and then exiting on the outside of the track again. But when using the wet line, you'll wanna do the opposite. So brake slightly in from the racing line, apex on the outside of the road and exit on the inside of the track. This is how to have the maximum amount of grip. As you'll be crossing over the racing line, that's the slipperiest part of the track. So when you do cross the racing line, make sure you have your car straight and try to use as little brake or throttle inputs as possible. When do you stay off the racing line and use the wet line? Well, it depends. Generally, the more time that you spend in a corner, the more you should be off the normal dry racing line, uh, which brings me to my next point. Number three, make sure to use the dry line in chicanes 
and really short corners. So as much fun as it is to use the wet line everywhere, it's not always optimal to use. Uh, it takes a long time to start on the inside of a corner, run all the way around the outside and then exit on the inside. A good example of this is a chicane. At the final two corners of the Charlotte Roval, the time it would take to run to the outside of each corner would just be so much longer than the time it takes to slow the car down and just toboggan the car over both apex curves and drive the car a bit slower. The same is true for short corner lengths. Uh, the less time you spend turning in a corner, the less time you spend in a corner, the more you should just use the normal dry racing line and drive it a little bit slower. A good example of this is at Bathurst, running up and down the hill. There's a bunch of really short corners and you don't have time to get to the outside of every corner. So you basically just use the racing line and hold on to the car. Tip number four is to not use the curbs, or at least like 95% of the time. Curbs, painted lines, and other surfaces are like super duper slippery in the wet. A good example of this is also at Charlotte Roval. Get the thing on the painted surfaces and the tire just skates on top of it and you'll crash. So stay off the painted stuff as much as possible. Now in my limited days of testing on iRacing, I have found some curbs have more grip than others. I was driving sand down a bunch and you can actually kind of use the raised curbs a bunch. At, at Dandenong Road and the second chicane, I was actually driving over it and kind of using the curb to hook the car. But then there's a flat curb on the top of the hill and if you hit that curb, the car just dies immediately. So have a play around with the curbs. Some of them will have more grip than you think and you can actually use them to hook you around the corner, but most of the flat ones and probably just 90% of the curbs in general will kill you. So uh, yeah, if in doubt, stay off the curb, don't touch them. Tip number five is to use less inputs and don't lock your brakes up. In the wet, since you have less overall grip, you have to use a lot less brake than usual. I'm talking maybe like 50% brake pressure maximum into a corner. You wanna brake very early and just very, very gently, preferably off the racing line using the wet line if possible. In the wet, because the track has less grip, if you lock a wheel, because it's kind of less friction, it's much less likely to unlock again before you get to the corner. So once it's locked, potentially it'll stay locked and you could crash. The trick to this is to just not lock the wheel up in the first place. Just be super gentle and don't use too much brake. The same thing goes with the throttle. Uh, ramp on the throttle carefully and be careful of wheel spin. Also, if you're starting the race, it's worth testing out what it's like starting the car in first gear and in second gear. Sometimes it's better to start in second gear and get less wheel spin. Tip number six, if in doubt, induce understeer. This goes for more of the newer drivers and really just if you're struggling with oversteer in the wet, this is something that I recommend. It's not super fast, but it can save your car <laughs> from crashing. And it's a technique that if you grow up in carts, you'll probably be used to because you spam the technique in go-karts a lot growing up. Basically, if you're unsure of the car gripping, crank the wheel hard and make the car understeer. If the car's understeering, it can't oversteer. So once the tires hook up, the front tires hook up at the very edge of a corner, the car will grip and you can deal with any oversteer then. But yeah, this is a, a safe way to get around the corner if you're really struggling on turn in. Tip number seven is use your aero. Fun fact, wings still work in the wet. So if you can keep your speeds up in an aero car, the faster you go, the more the car will be pushed into the ground and the more grip that you will have. This can impact what line you choose to try and keep the minimum speed up, but keep it in the back of your mind. Tip number eight is to maximize your exits. This is more for racing around other cars. Well, it's actually useful everywhere, but especially around other cars. In the wet, your number one way of passing other cars is by getting really big exits and kind of over and unding them. This also goes back to using the wet line. If you exit on the inside of the track as much as possible, you're gonna have more grip. So the moment you enter a corner, your number one focus should be on getting as good an exit as possible. Tip number nine is to experiment. Uh, every lap in the wet is different. It's getting, it's either getting more wet or it's getting less wet or there's a dry line or there's puddles. It's completely different. What works at one corner may not work at another and the line will be changing lap by lap. Try new stuff during the race um, if you can. If people are running the inside of a corner, try using the outside of the corner. 
and like if a curb looks not too scary, maybe try hitting it. You'll be getting faster and faster as the track dries. So push your limits and try different things. And my final tip is that your number one priority on the racetrack is to survive. It's really easy to get carried away with trying to go as fast as possible and driving at the limit of the car, but you need to remember your number one goal in a race is to finish the race. And in the wet, it's really easy to make a mistake and crash. Trust me, you'll do it a bunch, way more than you will in the dry. The majority of people using iRacing aren't professional race drivers. Uh, most drivers under 2000 I rating are the equivalent of your local grassroots racer. And in the wet in real life, the focus shifts from getting the maximum out of the car to just bringing it home in one piece and getting a result at that level. The same mentality needs to be brought to sim racing. If you're scared or if you're struggling, just slow down. I guarantee you people in front of you will crash and you'll make up positions, but just bring the speed down and make sure that you finish. So those are my 10 tips for driving in the rain. It's a pretty scary experience if you've never done it before, but you should give it a go. And the only way to get better is by doing it over and over again and not being scared of failure, basically. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me know how, what you think of my tips in the comments. If you're like, if you're Max Verstappen and you're watching this, feel free to give me some tips as well in the comments. I'd, lo I'd love to know about them. Yeah, I'll beat one a bit higher there. <laughs> Otherwise, if you like the video, you can click the like button and you can also subscribe to Overtake for more sim racing videos. Um, I'm gonna be doing a bunch more on this latest iRacing build very soon. So subscribe for that. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.